This is Eli from Typewriter Minutes. One of our all-time favorite Muppets, Kermit the Frog, once said, It's not easy being green. Unless you're this 1958 Royal Quiet Deluxe and Luxurious Green. Picked this machine up, uh, I don't know, maybe six months ago. We saw an ad, a local ad in Wichita Falls, which is not exactly close to South Lake. But we went ahead and made a, a morning trip out of it, and I think you can see why. This thing looks like it's straight out of a time machine. I have not cleaned the body at all. I did clean the, the keys, the platen knobs here on the side, but I have not cleaned the body just because it doesn't need it, and I'm afraid of messing it up. Uh, decals on the back, just about perfect. I don't think you can get any better than that. Just all the way around, looks like it's brandy new. A little bit of wear here with the line space numbering. Uh, teeny, tiny nick right there. But otherwise, this thing, like I said, looks straight out of a time machine. So before we give you the review of this 58 Royal Quiet Deluxe, I'm going to give you a quick history of some of the earlier versions of the Royal Quiet Deluxe. The Royal Quiet Deluxe was first introduced in 1939 with the Magic Margin. It was mostly black with the occasional brown, some more black. It was redesigned over the years. The major redesign was done by the industrial designer Henry Dreyfus. In 1949. In 1950 or so, they had more drab colors like drab gray and brown. And in 1955, bang, they had really bright colors like yellow, red, turquoise, and green. They heavily promoted these colors in the advertisements. But then, in 1959, they moved on to more space-age typewriters, like the Royal... Futura. And the Royal... Safari. Okay, back to our 58 Quiet Deluxe. Eli, tell us a little bit about the keys. So, it has a standard QWERTY keyboard, a backspace, a dedicated exclamation point, and one key. These both go at the same time. Oh, uh, and uh, so it's not a carriage shift, it's a basket shift, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very light on the pinkies. It has a margin release key and a tab key. Tab, how do you set the tabs? The back here just pops open and you push and slide these little tab stoppers. Excellent. Okay, now you'll notice um, this is a little bit cleaner look than the just the prior version of the Royal Clyde Deluxe. They used to have the silver button right here to pop open the hood and then the color selector switch used to be right here now what they've done is this little royal logo is a push button that pops open the hood sometimes it needs a little bit of help opening up and then inside is where you have the ribbon color selector right here so it's on black flip it to red and there's stencil so stencil Red, oop, stencil, black, red. Over here, you get the touch control for lighter or heavier touch. Right here is the manual reverse for the ribbon. So when it's, you'll see it's winding one direction. This side's winding clockwise. When it gets to the end of the ribbon, a little eyelet, you have to have the eyelet on the ribbons, comes out, triggers these forks, starts winding in the other direction, or you can just do it manually by flipping that switch there. And again, nice light basket shift, easy on the pinkies, and the ribbon vibrator, it's kind of easy for uh, changing the ribbon out. You can put it on the red selection, put a couple keys together to lift it up, um, and then you can lift, or you just push in and pull apart, make it easier to get the ribbon in and out of there. Sorry. So those go doink, doink. 
to get the ribbon out to change it. So actually, I think you don't probably don't need to lift the ribbon up. Just spread those apart. That's it for the uh, basket. And we'll come around uh, to the side of the machine in just a sec. Just a quick note. There's a little number scale down there, and it has a little pointy arrow that shows you exactly where you're typing. And those numbers line up with the numbers on the scale on the paper bale, and those numbers line up with the scale on the tabulator scale. All right. Okay, let's go over to this side of the machine. You know, I mentioned the paper bale. It's got this nice ergonomic little handle on there, and it lifts up this way. Also comes out this way. So up this way or that way. Over here, I'm gonna pass off the camera to Eli. We got a platen knob. There's a carriage release lever on each side. One here, one on the other side. There's a magic margin red button on each side. We're gonna show you how that works in just a minute. And then this is the paper release lever. So when you put the paper in, if it's crooked, you just lift it, scoot your paper, lift it back. This little tan doodad was missing when I got it. There's a tan doodad over here and a tan doodad here. I stole this one, I hate to say it, off of another Royal Quiet Deluxe. Uh, well, I, I'm gonna show you what my plans are to replace it in a few minutes, but it's, it was missing that and it's missing a little set screw here for the platen knob. There's two of them. One of them's missing. I might wrap, rob the set screw from the other machine and put it in here. We'll see. So let's go over the back of the machine. It's got these bunny ears for paper support. On this side, you'll notice if you'll zoom in, there's a red dot there and a red dot there. And we'll show you what those are for in just a few minutes. They serve a purpose. Okay, back over to the back of the machine. Lovely Royal logo. It's painted on, I think I said decal earlier, but it's painted on and it's just about perfect. Over to this side of the machine. Again, magic margin button. We'll show you how to set the margins. This little tan doodad over here is to release the spacing. So, platen clicks if you need to move it up a half a space to do like you know 10 to the third you can just flip that move it up a little bit type and then when you're done flip it back and it remembers your line spacing the variable line spacer over here this button here you can push that in also releases the ratchets but that's a permanent change once you do that it'll once you release it, it's permanently set to that click position. Okay, up here, if you'll zoom in, we have the line space numbers. One, two, three. That's really the only place on this machine that looks like it's a little bit worn. Hard to see in the shadow. Um, but still, letter, or the numbers are still visible. And over here, you have a little sliding paper scale. So. You can see the scale peeking through here, where the tabs are, and then you can just set, we keep it on zero. And that's it for most of the features. We're gonna put some paper in and show you how the magic, marg magic margins work, and also what these red dots are for. And we'll do that, we'll do that before we do the typing test. Okay, back to the red dots there. Um, I have not, like I said, taking this machine apart and cleaned it. The platen and the feed rollers need to be cleaned because it has a little bit of a hard time grabbing the paper. We'll give it a shot here. I got two sheets of paper in there. Yeah, not bad this time. And what you do, after you get the paper in, you'll see on the paper bale, if you'll zoom in, Mr. Cameraman, there's a little red arrow. We're gonna turn that until See, it says set, and then that line right below set, you want that to be right on the bottom of the arrow. Once you have that lined up, you come over here, push the variable line space button in, 
Now, when I turn to platen, you'll zoom in, you'll see those numbers don't change, just the platen is moving. And what you do is zoom back to the paper. You're supposed to line up the back of the paper with those red dots. So you have to make sure these are all the way up and the back paper is supposed to be lined up with those red dots. They're not quite even, so we're gonna eyeball it and get it right maybe halfway between that one and that one. So now, when you get towards the end of the paper, this scale shows you how many lines you have left. So you have 12 lines left, nine, six, three, zero, and you're done. So it's kind of like the system that Smith Kona had on theirs, but a little bit different because it uses the little red dots on the bunny ears. Hey, wait a minute, we forgot to show a lever over on this side. Okay, this little lever right here, that's the carriage centering lever. So push it down and then the carriage stops halfway. Now it's locked in place when you're for putting it in the case. And when you're ready to type, just flip it up. Now it's loose. Okay, let's see those magic margins. Okay, so we got the red button on the left and the right with the uh, magic margin trademark sign on it. And the system is kind of like the Hermes 3000. There's no um, sliding margin indicators on the left and the right side, which is actually what I prefer over the magic margin system. But what you do, um, slide it over to the left margin or wherever it's set. And as you push the carriage release lever, I'm gonna do the right hand carriage release lever and then push the magic margin button in. And now you can slide and wherever you let go of the magic margin button, so I release the magic margin button and the carriage release lever at the same time. Now that's your margin. And if you wanna go back over here, again, just pull the carriage release lever. I'm gonna do the right one over here and the magic margin button. Slide it over to the left or wherever you wanna go. Let go of both of them. And that's where your left margin is set. Do the same thing on the right. You can slide all the way over to the right. Uh, there's the bill. Hold down the magic margin button and the carriage release lever. Slide it to wherever you want it to go. So we'll put it on 60 and then let go. And now that's your right margin. And then we go back farther to, the farther to the right. Push the carriage release lever and the mar margin release button. We'll slide it over to about 75 and let go. And that's where you are. I think it's a little bit uh, cumbersome. I, again, I prefer just the simple sliding margin stops or indicators on the top that a lot of typewriters have, but it's something different. All right, now let's do the type test. All right, before I do the little type test, one thing I've noticed is that your typing action has to be just about perfect on this or else it's prone to skipping. If you have any sloppiness in how long you hold down the keys, that sucker will double space on you. And so it's probably not my favorite typing machine just because of that. Maybe my typing style is a little bit sloppy normally, but you have to be really on top of your game and be extra snappy in order to prevent the double spaces from happening. Okay, so we're gonna start on black. I'll be as snappy as I can be. Mr. Narrator, you're supposed to be reading that. Quick red fox jumped over the lazy brown dogs. You can see it's uh, looks like pica, not elite. Now let's change it over to red. And now on the red setting, 
Now is the time for all good men to come to the end of their country. There's the line lock, so you're at the right margin. We'll do margin release. So let's look at that. I do have a new ribbon on there, and it, uh, everything prints really nicely. I think I checked the alignment, but we'll do that on the fly here, because I don't remember. I think I checked it. Capital H, small H, capital H, small H, capital H, small H, capital H, small H. It's pretty close. Let's see. Not bad. It looks like the small H's need to come down a little bit. I'll tinker with that. Um, otherwise, prints really nicely. It is very snappy, but you really do have to have a snappy touch or else you just get the... It's probably not going to do it when I try, but of course not. Yeah, it seems like it's prone to skipping just if you're not the snappiest typer. Murphy's Law says it's not going to do it right now. Anyway, overall has a very nice typing touch, but you have to be on top of your game. Now some pros and cons of this 1958 Royal Quiet Deluxe. The pros are the lush green color. The body is in excellent shape. The cool Royal logo opens the ribbon cover. Doink. And it's a very snappy typer. Let's see, some of the cons that we noticed. Let's get out of the shadow there. It's prone to skipping. If you're a sloppy typer, it may not be the best machine for you. It is snappy, but is, uh, you really have to be on top of your game. The magic margin system is not my favorite. I would rather have the simple point and slide margin indicators. Uh, the platinum feed rollers on this particular machine need to be cleaned uh, just because it's not grabbing the paper as nice as I would like, but I can deal with that later. And then the missing set screw for the platen knob. But actually, during a break, I stole it from the other machine. Uh, but it's a bummer that I'm still missing one from my other machine. And I'll show you what we're going to do with this tan doodad here in just a sec. All right, we'll show you the case in the bottom of the machine. The case is this kind of yellowish looking, kind of a dirty yellow looking tweed dish cover to it. It's in good shape. No major dents or dings or rips. Um, latches securely. It's got a little clip there for papers. And then on the bottom, this little metal piece slides into the back of the machine right there. And then these two posts right here go into the bottom feet. So you'll see, as I look at the bottom of the machine, and you'll notice the, actually the rubber on these feet is still really good. But the screw itself has a hole in it. There, and again, these feet up here, there's a hole in the screw, and those posts in the case go into that hole right there. So when you're ready to put it in, very carefully, because we don't want to scuff the paint, slide it into that back metal piece. Like so. Feet go on the posts, and then once it's in there, slide these guys forward. Now the typewriter is locked in place. Centering lever, push it down. Now it's locked nice and centered. Close the case, it'll push the lever out of the way. You're good to go. On the bottom side of the case, it has four places where they had these, I don't know why they did this, but there used to be rubber feet and three of them are gone. 
This one's just barely hanging on. I'm probably gonna take that off. And I'll find probably find some rubber grommets to fit on there. I don't think you really need them. But I guess they thought you needed feet not only on the bottom but on the side of the case. Kind of weird. Anyway, that's the case. Okay, a couple final notes. I have a matching 58 Royal Quiet Deluxe in the gray color. I picked these up about two weeks apart from one another, so it's kind of funny how things come in pairs. That case is a little bit more yellow. That one's just a little bit different color. But I was gonna show you the, again, I stole this tan doodad and the set screw from this machine. I kind of feel guilty about it. These guys have been together for how many years and I've stolen the set screw and the tan doodad, which goes right there. Fortunately, well, I'm still looking for a set screw now, but if you have one of those you can spare, let me know. Uh, there's a guy I know who 3D prints typewriter parts, and I had him print some of these tan doodads for me. They look really good. The color is just a touch off. It's a little bit brighter. It's hard to tell in the light. It's a little bit fleshier color than that. But I think I found a really good match with this Rust-Oleum. So I'm gonna paint these so that I don't have a missing tan doodad on this guy. The hole in it is just a touch too small. Um, I haven't figured out a good way to make the hole bigger by digging it out. So if I get brave enough, I'm gonna find a way to protect the rest of this machine. Maybe heat that up with a little uh, butane torch and then push it on and melt it on after I get them painted. So we'll keep you updated on that machine if I get that done in the next, I don't know, two years. But that's it for now on Typewriter Minutes. Be sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Bye. And let's take one last look at Mr. Green. Button. Wink. <laughs>